<sighs> What's up guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you a really simple way you can track your training to make sure you are building muscle or getting stronger. It is a foolproof way of doing it and it's extremely simple. Actually, it's as simple as you want it to be. This is particularly effective for people that are short on time. Maybe you've got kids, maybe you're a little bit busier um, and you get three sessions a week instead of five. It's gonna work great if you do more training as well, but it's just very time effective and very, very simple. Before we get into that, I'm very excited. My new Nike by you just arrived, you know, a little TLM on them. Uh, I've just come back from holiday as well. And the reason I wanted to create this video for you, for those who know, I've recently had my first Jiu Jitsu competition, lost of a lot of weight for it, like seven kilos. Um, I went on holiday into Seville, which was amazing. Ate the churros, ate the pizza, ate everything, but walked so much that I came back at a very similar weight, which means I now have scope to build muscle and still compete in that weight category if I want to compete again. So I've probably got two kilos to play with, and it's not easy to build two kilos of lean muscle. So my goal is to go into a very small calorie surplus to gain minimal body fat, but then really start training progressively. And that is what we're gonna to do today. So let's get some pre-workout going. Let's do it. Also, on a side note, if you see me walking funny in this video, it's because I did a 70 mile bike ride yesterday to join in on my friend's charity ride. They did 500 miles. I only did 70 other buggers and my gooch is destroyed. So in my drink for pre-workout or workout, I've got creatine. Um, I might put some beta alanine in there as well. Um, and I've got this from Optimum Nutrition, which is Train Sustain, which is effectively electrolytes and BCAAs. Electrolytes because I lost a lot of fluids yesterday. And then we're gonna go, and I'm gonna show you how we're programming. Two scoops, uno, dos. There she is, the old passion wagon. Facebook Marketplace, like 130 quid last year. What's up guys, you may see that I've got a different top on. It's a day later, came in last night, did three sets of bench and thought, let's not push it, you did do a massive bike ride. Today, we're back in, we're back at it. I'm gonna explain to you a really simple trick and something that I think is incredibly valuable for progressive overload and for building muscle. Those of you who have followed us for a long time will know what progressive overload is. For those who don't, here's the world's fastest explanation. In Greek times, there was supposedly a wrestler called Milo. He was the strongest, the fastest, the best. The way he progressively overloaded his body was he started off by picking up a baby calf and he would walk, let's say, 100 meters with it every day. As the calf got heavier and kind of became a bull, the weight that he had to lift became heavier. And every day he would walk that 100 meters just with a heavier, heavier load. That is a good example of the body adapting to a progressive stress. The body always adapts to stress. So that's what we're trying to look at. So one way we can look at progressive overload is the most simplest form. If you took your primary compound lifts, because they're very, very important. And let's say on day one, or once a week I deadlift. And let's say I do one set of 10 reps, just for, just for argument's sake, to make it easy. And each one of those reps is at 100 kilos, yeah? So I did 10 reps of 100 kilos, so I lifted 1,000 kilos. So I put 1,000 kilos in that first box for week one. Next week, I need to do more than that. I could do more sets, I could do more reps, I could do more weight. Each one of those is gonna allow me to get a higher total kilos done in the next session. And that's something you can do. It's re it works best if you're on a training program where it's like, all right, for the next six weeks, we're doing 10 rep range on squats. And then we might be doing five rep range because then it's easier. You know, you've just got to get an extra rep or you've just got to increase the weight by 0.25. If you change the rep scheme a lot, it gets a little bit more convoluted, but still makes perfect sense. That's one thing that I'm going to be doing um, over the coming weeks, just because I'm so busy with jujitsu, I've got it twice today. It just allows me to make sure I'm hitting those, those basic things. Um, what I'm actually doing today is I'm doing a really bodybuilding focused session because uh, I'm trying the next phase of program that I've programmed for the TLM train, training plan. Um, and it's, I try to make it so you can do it at the gym and you can do it at home. So it's a lot, it's very bodybuilding focused, basically. My legs have not recovered yet. They're not gonna be recovered, uh, but I won't train legs today because I don't want to do deadlifts because doing jujitsu with a tight back is horrendous. Legs, I don't mind so much. So weights are gonna be very, very light on this one. We're trying to go heavy, but I just don't think my body's gonna allow me. And we've got plenty of calves in it, so you'll see me actually doing some calves for once in my life. Speaking of calves, 
bloody came off the bike, didn't I? And the sprocket of my bike went through my bloody leg when I fell over in the mud. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get warmed up. We'll hit some squats. This is my first time squatting for months, really, um, with any kind of load for the simple reason of hurt my knee running up to the jiu-jitsu competition and I didn't want to make it bad. I just had to keep it okay and I didn't need to squat. Now, I need to get strong, get the gains going, let's put some tunes on, let's do this. <sighs> okay, would appear my legs are pretty trash. Actually, my lower back, probably the position I was biking in, to the point that 80 kilos <laughs> wasn't particularly comfortable. And I knew it was going to be weak because I haven't squatted for a while. Um, but that's where we're at today. That was the first set of 10. We'll see how the next ones go. I've got three sets of 10, then a set of four to six heavier. Then when the volume comes in. Um, it would normally be done on leg press with calf raises. As a super set, 40 second work leg press, just rep it out. 40 second work of calf raises. Don't have a leg press. So I'm either going to do dual dumbbell squats or front squats. Either way, legs are getting smashed in this session. It's been like five exercises. It's actually inspired by Chris Bumstead, who's a super famous um, bodybuilding competitor. I program the TLM gym plan. Um, it's like 14 pound a month for periodized program and it's absolute steal. Okay, next up we're gonna use a landmine row. This is amazing. Um, I got this from Wolverton, it's 30 quid. I actually saw Courtney Fur on shout out to him, he's a Nike master trainer at the Nike HQ in London, and he had one, and I was like, I need that. So today will be Romanian deadlifts, all my calves. I'm going to do single leg land nine RDLs by putting this barbell in the land my attachment, which literally attaches, just drops inside a bumper plate. That's why it's so good. You don't have to uh, connect it to anything. And then I'm gonna do single leg RDLs, which you guys will see in just a moment. This is also amazing for single arm rows, T-bar rows, uh, shoulder press, explosive kind of stuff. If you wanna do anything for MMA or shot put even, um, oblique twist with it. It's really bloody good, basically, for 30 quid. Lift us back on, don't want to mess up the new Metcons. Leg extensions, legs are pretty cooked to be honest. Tell you what, this next block of the gym plan that I've programmed is gonna be epic. Um, I'm gonna see this one all the way through. I'm enjoying it, man. Um, I like the way it feels, obviously with the inspiration for more bodybuilding type stuff. We've done tons of different blocks. We've done German volume chaining blocks. We've done all the different splits you can imagine. We've done different tempos. We've been for loads of different things. We have different emphases. Maybe it was on increasing the deadlift, the front squat. But this month is specifically just building muscles. And we're going to push, pull legs. And then we're going to have a Friday session or whatever day you choose to do it. That's going to be slightly more Metcon based, still with uh, weights involved. Um, but there's going to be something that raises the heart rate a bit too. Just for general health as well as fitness and trimming off the body fat. So guys, like I said, super, super, super easy way of tracking your total weekly volume. You can make that as simple or as complicated as you like. You can track every exercise, you could track every muscle group or every muscle and the total volume put for that each week. But it's just a real easy way to make it, if you're only tracking your compound lifts, that alone is gonna make a huge difference if you are not tracking at all, like night and day differences. And you can build that out as much as you want. But I just wanted to give it to you because it's simple and not many people think of it. And I find it really motivating because you're like, oh, that's what I've got. And when you just go and do the same weight again, you're like, yeah, but if I squeeze even a 0.5 kilo plate on there, am I gonna be able to beat last week? And it's just, it's like having a clock in a workout. I love working out anything fitness-based with a timer because that's like my person to race against. Like if you remember the old computer games, still new computer games, any racing one, you get your ghost car of your previous lap time. It's that same thing, it's that competitive spirit and just wanting to do better. And it's a really great way to hold yourself accountable. Now, I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please let me know in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next one. Bye team.